But the Israelis are really trying to clamp down on expressions of support for Palestine because they can sense, at least I sense, that public opinion is turning against Israel on this matter. Mary Margulies, thank you so much for talking to Middle East Eye. It's a lovely opportunity. Thank you for asking me. Your Harry Potter co-star, Emma Watson, she recently shared a photo on her Instagram account, and it was from a pro-Palestinian rally, and it had the phrase, solidarity is a verb. Now, there was immediate backlash from some current and, and former Israeli officials. Um, a former Israeli ambassador to the UN called Watson an anti-Semite. Now, how do you view Watson's post firstly, and then their reaction by some of these Israeli officials? I think it was terrific and, and wonderful. And you can only expect the Israelis to uh, respond in the way they did. They don't like any criticism of Israel. Indeed, any criticism of Israel is regarded as being anti-Semitic. The two things are, are conflated, unfortunately, that um, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism which it isn't. She didn't do anything wrong. She she spoke from her heart. I applaud that. But the Israelis are really trying to clamp down on expressions of support for Palestine because they can sense, at least I sense, that public opinion is turning against Israel on this matter. And uh, they want to stop that, nip it in the bud as quickly as they can. And the only way they can do that is, is to cast aspersions on the person who is saying it. So they're, they're trying to make out that, that she's an anti-Semite, which she, of course she isn't. Nothing further from the truth. We have to be able to criticize Israel. We have to show uh, where it is failing. I mean, I'm Jewish and I've never hidden that, or nor would I consider hiding it or want to hide it. But um, I don't in my heart believe that, that Israel should have been brought into being because in order for it to be brought into being, other people had their lives and their lands taken away from them, and that isn't fair. I do not ever think that Israel should be blown into the sea or that everybody should be killed. That's no solution. That doesn't make it any better. But I would like to see a change of attitude towards Palestinians. Over the years, you said you visited Israel and also Gaza and the occupied West Bank. Now, I'm curious, how have these visits shaped your views of the Palestinian cause and, and the Palestinian people, as well as your views on the uh, Israeli government? My commitment to Palestine is not a political commitment, it's a human commitment. And it came about because I saw for myself the deprivation and misery that my people, the Jews, were putting the Palestinians through. It wasn't something that I read about or heard about, but I saw it for myself. And when you see things for yourself, it has a powerful effect. When you express such critical views of Israeli policies and the Israeli government, and as a Jew yourself, I mean, do people rebuke you for it, for being passionate about the, the, the Palestinian cause and for being so critical of the Israeli government? Oh, of course they do. Yes. I mean, I've been called a fascist. I've been called a, a self-hating Jew, an anti-Semite. Absolutely. I get, I get um, a fair amount of rather horrible remarks addressed to me and letters and emails and so on. And I, and I just have to accept it because people feel very passionately about this subject and they regard me as uh, someone who is betraying their, the, my people, I'm betraying 
my Jewishness. Whereas I think you see that they are, because I've always felt that, that the Jewish spirit and the, the Jewish tradition was one of compassion and kindness and decency to strangers and so on. And over the years, you've also referred to yourself as a non-Zionist Jew. Now, I'm curious to know why it's so important for you to make this distinction clear. I believe in living morally. Mummy always said, do the right thing. And to me, it just feels I'm doing the right thing. I'm pointing out that people that are connected with me by by religion or by race or whatever you want to call it, are doing something wrong, evil, wicked, destructive. And if I don't draw attention to that, I am implicated in those actions and I don't want that. You spent parts of your time in Australia as well. Um, I wanted to ask about a recent development there. I mean, over 30 artists and groups withdrew from the Sydney Festival over Israeli funding and in solidarity with the Palestinian cause. Now, critics of this boycott called it censorship. They called it a weapon of division. What's your take? Do you see such moves necessary? Yes, I do. I signed uh, the petition to, well, to ask the Sydney Festival to refuse uh, to invite that group. And I think that that is part of BDS and you shouldn't do business with people who are doing something wrong. And I think that having uh, dealings with the Israeli government, knowing what they do is wrong. So I'm against it and I will speak up against it and I would do it again. And just to bring it to a close, I mean, we've recently seen a growing list of artists, actors, celebrities, who use their voices and their platforms to try and draw attention to, to Palestine and, and, and the Palestinian cause. Now, do you believe pro-Palestine support is in fact growing? And what would you say to those who fear a backlash similar to the Emma Watson example that we discussed earlier? I do think that the support for, for Palestine is growing as more and more people become aware of what is going on. And there will always be a backlash. People will take every opportunity to, to shut you up. We can't be shut up. You know, one of the things that really shocks me, the law of return. Any Jew born anywhere in the world can go and live in Palestine. No Palestinian can. That's wrong. Doesn't take a major brain to see that. And I'm not a major brain. I'm, th I'm thinking with my heart, and that's what I'm like. I support Palestine because it's right to do so. End of story.